Good morning, family. Tony here, Sunday, August the 8th. Um, guys, I want to come on here and I want to, you know, talk about a few things that are new. Also want to talk about um, uh, some reviews from last year and this year. And um, just to kind of give a, an overall picture of what's going on where we're at. And um, before I get into anything, I want to... Um, you know, I, I was thinking of all the things that I wanted to put in this video, but I want to make the most impact I can and get to the most important subjects that matter. So, God, I'm going to have to, uh, guys, I'm going to have to go to God in prayer on this one and ask the Lord for help. So, um, Heavenly Father, um, I come to you humble today. And um, there are so many people out there right now who are who are afraid um, with this, uh, this, this V that's coming, um, that's coming probably going to be mandated everywhere and um god i just ask that you would guide this this um this video this in my words so that i can so, you know so that i can get the points across and um comfort people encourage people lord that that you know you will be coming for us soon and um to just um try to make clear um, what i'm what I'm talking about for because there's a lot of spiritual implications in the things that are happening around us that come straight from your word. So please help me to to speak and to get this message across the best way that I can. And um just bless this message, Lord. And Father, I ask that you bless all those out there who love you and um please give them encouragement and strength and for the Red Sea moment that we're about to face, Lord, we trust you. Please give them encouragement. Um, also, all those who have not come to you, Lord, I ask that you draw them to Jesus today and to uh, make them see, open their eyes and their hearts so they can see what's going on and how important it is to be, you know, in Christ Jesus in these days, in these last days, in these last moments even. And Father, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> um, guys, I was thinking about this video and it's important. And I was thinking about all the things I could do. Maybe, um, you know, writing some stuff down, showing you a list. But then I realized that if I went over every single thing that's happened last year and this year, just to me, just the, the, the spiritual things that have happened to me, um, what I believe that God has showed me, it would take up several hours of time. Um, I've chronicled pretty much everything from the start. Um, if there was anything I didn't chronicle and make a video about, it was probably just something very insignificant. Um, although I know that some insignificant things are not so insignificant, uh, so I've tried to even include some of those. So anyways, um, before I get started, guys, if you haven't come to Lord Jesus, um, uh, now's the time. It's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's not a time now to play Russian roulette with your soul, with your eternity. Because we're not promised another day or another minute at any moment Jesus could return. At any moment, tribulation could start. And, and with that being said, there may not be time to get right with God in that moment. Um, that twinkling of an eye is what the Bible refers to the rapture as. In a twinkling of an eye, we will be changed. But, um, Jesus comes for us and we'll be caught up in a moment. And it's not, no, there's no time in a moment to, um, to get yourself right. It's, it, the time is now. The time is now while while we're here, while um, while we can. Let's believe the gospel that Jesus was the Son of God. He died on the cross for our sins. After living the perfect life we couldn't live, he was buried, raised in three days. He ascended to heaven, made atonement for our sins with his precious blood. He promised to come back for us. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the appearing of the great God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So um, steps in description, first two are the, are, are, are the gospel. That's what you must do to be saved. Um, trust in Jesus. That's the bottom line. Trust in his atonement, his, his sacrifice. Okay, now I want to cover some of the, you know, some of the new stuff. Well, all of it, really. The new stuff first. And I want to go into kind of a review. I'm not, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to be able to cover everything. I'm going to try to cover some of the most important things. Um and maybe just um, touch on some some other things. Let's see how, how much time we have left. But um, this morning, um, right before I decided to make this video, 
I noticed actually it was this was just minutes ago, really, um, you know, probably within the past ten minutes. I saw a video posted by Mike four 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 about an article that hundreds of people in the UK were hospitalized for the Delta variant that were vaccinated, that were, you know, that did have the V. And um, public officials were warning that the V does not prevent you from getting the Delta variant, nor does it prevent you from spreading it, which is something I've been saying for a while now. That I've been talking to people at work and everywhere else that some that have have got it and some that are thinking about getting it and trying to warn them that, you know, my wife's in, she's in the medical field. She's a, she works at a clinic and she sees it every day. She's seen many people come in with the V who had the, the virus and were sick, really sick. And, um, and even they know that, 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 that this thing doesn't prevent it, the spread and it doesn't prevent you from catching it. The only thing that it is supposed to even do, which I don't even necessarily believe that myself, I don't, I don't trust the thing at all, but the only thing it's supposed to do is lessen the symptoms and make it, you know, keep you from dying from it. But even that really hasn't been proven. Um, it just hasn't been tested enough to know that for sure. Maybe in some people, maybe not. But the fact is, people aren't being informed. So um, if you really want to know about this thing, if you're thinking about doing it, please, I urge you, do your research. Pray about it, you know. Just do your research. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that it's uh, the mark of the beast. Um, in fact, I'm saying the opposite. It's not. I know it's not. I mean, you know, as someone who studies the Word, you, you, know, you, you, have, to, you have to read the Word of God. You can't just cherry pick pieces of you know, of a story like the, the Mark of the Beast, that, that this Revelation 13, you can't just cherry pick pieces of it and apply it to something and say that this is, this is it. This is, this is the prophecy because prophecy has to be fulfilled exactly. I mean, that's the whole point. It's something that's being told. Prophecy is a future telling, okay? It's, it's something that has already happened in God's eyes and he is giving somebody the, the warning and giving them the message before it happens. So it's, um, the fact is that it can't be the mark because it doesn't line up with Scripture completely. There's pieces of it that do, but there's more pieces that don't. Um, so the timing is not right. Therefore, it can't be. Now, um, that's not to say that it's not bad or that it's not the shadow and, 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 uh, of it, or maybe even the um, the beginning of it, uh, the start of it, the, of the way it's going to come about, however you want to put it. But just know this, that... This is going to be the catalyst that that causes that, that brings it in at some point. That's that's what I'm saying. It's definitely um, it's definitely bad, and I would never recommend it for anybody. I've chosen me and my family have chosen not to partake in this thing, and um, you know, it, it's just like my wife and I were talking about. Even if you took the religious part out of it, which we don't, <laughs> mind you, if you even if you did, even if you want to say, well. You know, we got to, you know, trust in science and all. This thing has not been tested. You know, it's not been tested long enough or properly, and it was never approved by FDA. So you can't, you can't look at it like this as like, you know, oh, it's like every other vaccine. Well, I'm not even sure about any of them, but I know one thing that all of these things, you know, have questionable substances. And just about every drug known to man has some sort of adverse side effect. And there, there's warnings on everything you take. Even ibuprofen and Tylenol have warnings that they could cause adverse side effects and cause, um, you know, and if too much of it is taken, it can even cause death. So, you know, you're, there's just, you know, there's that. So um, put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and God and his word first. The Bible says to um, seek ye first the kingdom of God that all other things shall be added unto thee. So you want to put God first in everything. So before you make a decision like this, that could be not only life changing, body changing, it could have spiritual implications as far as, um, especially if you're not already saved. I mean, God forbid, I, I can't, I don't even want to get into that subject. If this thing does change you, what that might cause to happen inside of you, I, I don't know. But, but, but I'm referring to just those people who are already saved. I'm urging them not to. And I'm completely, if, you, if you're not saved and you take this thing, 
I mean, you know, spin the spin the dial on the gun, you know, because I mean, you're putting your you're 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 putting your life in the hands of of the world, and um, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say about that. Um, put your trust in Jesus, you know. Put put your trust in in, in God and, and and let Him guide you. In fact, I, I would say. Put your trust and your faith in God and allow him to be a part of every single thing you do. There's nothing too great or too small that God doesn't love us enough to be involved in. He loves us, guys. He loves us so much he sent his son to die for us. He's not up there turned to blind eyes. It's not like he's up there, you know, holding his ears and looking the other direction while all this is happening. He knows what's going on. Just like he knew that the children of Israel, in fact, he guided them to this place to begin with. It's not like he didn't know that they were up against the Red Sea and that the Pharaoh's armies was coming. He knew, guys, this was a test of faith. We are in that Red Sea moment right now. And we are literally looking at the Red Sea on one side and the Pharaoh's armies coming on the other. And instead of coming with shields and bucklers and, you know, swords, <laughs> they're coming with, with this and... um. Guys, this is serious. This is serious stuff. You know, as a as a as a believer and a man of faith, you know, you you have to you have to see where this is taking us. Um, the, the implications are far reaching, even far beyond the physical. Here, we're 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 being basically put under um, subjugation, and we're a free country, guys. We we have a God given right to do what to to put in our bodies what we want to and what we don't want to. If we don't feel like something is good for us, we have the God-given right to refuse it. But, the, the, but but we're being put in a position where we can't even leave our homes. That was one of the articles that said, I'm going to leave the post for this article. Uh, well, the post for the video where Mike 44 talks about this article. Um, you know what? I don't know for sure if he's got it linked or not or if he's going to link it. I'm sure he probably will. He usually does. But the article basically um, is saying that the president of, um, of England, I guess, um, I don't know how that stuff works over there because, I mean, look at the UK, England. I get confused. But UK or England or whatever, the president was saying, because at first it was, it was told by um, by someone said, had said this, that, that there were going to have to be people that wasn't veed were going to have to be you know, kept from getting government, you know, subsidiaries. And um, they thought it was a rumor until the president come out and said it too. And he says that people that don't get beat ought to be, they, they ought not to be able to come out of their homes and they need to be arrested and locked up if they don't get it. So guys, it's coming, okay? I'm, I'm just telling you, coming. Look, look, mene, mene, teko, you parson. The writing is on the wall. Um, first of all, concerning this country, it has been, um, the, the, the days of it, this kingdom has been numbered um, and it's been divided or it will be divided. It's been weighed into balance and found wanting. And this country will be given over to its enemies because it has turned a blind eye to the word of God and it is casting the shadow of evil upon God's children. And you can't mess with God's children because when you do, you will bring judgment. Almighty God will only take so much before he reacts. And when you start messing with innocent blood and his children, you are leaving yourself in the hands of a living almighty God. And brother, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be, and nobody, nobody wants to be that person. Okay. So if you, um, if you see what I'm telling you, if you look around and you just open your eyes and you see what's happening in this country and many countries, you will see the shadow of the mark of the beast and the antichrist system bearing down on us guys, like the Red Sea was bearing down on the Hebrews. Stand back. Hold fast, be still, and behold the glory of God. We are that close to our evacuation. Um, we are that close to going home. So, guys, don't be discouraged. Don't don't be um, don't don't be don't despair now because we're we're this is it. You know, I've spoken of this before that there would probably be a Red Sea moment. There would probably be. I made a video about it. Many many watchmen have made videos about the Red Sea moment because we knew that this is coming. I mean, this is so strong in our spirit right now. So, um, guys, like I said, hold fast. Uh, don't be, don't, don't fall in fear and shrink back and, and, and do something out of fear that you're going to regret. 
Okay, if you make the decision to do this, make sure that God is involved in it. Make sure you have prayed and make sure you have weighed the options, the balance, the 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 the, the risks. Okay, because um, the way I see it, the risk outweigh the advantages. Okay, you know, so so let's um let's be let's be smart, guys. God gave us a a, a spirit. Uh, of intelligence and wisdom, he didn't give us a spirit of ignorance and stupidity. So let's let's just, I mean, you know, if you if you decide to do it and you feel that's the right thing to do, then then okay, that's that's between you and God. Nobody can judge you for that, you know. Um, but but this, like I said, has to be between you and God. And just make sure that before you make that decision, that a lot of us are not going to make, that a lot of us will be persecuted for not making. Make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. And make sure that you got God involved, because I guarantee you, is if, if you put God in it, he's going to probably persuade you not to do it. That's just the way I feel. That's the way I see it. At any rate, and I hope you will take it to God first. And I don't know many of you have, many of you have done it. And okay, you know, like I said, for saved Christians, you know, this, this is not something that's going to affect your spirit, your soul is redeemed, is saved, is going to heaven in rapture. When it, if it happens, you know, soon, we, we're going to be gone. You're going to go. But um, your body, your body, like I said before, it's um, sin was condemned to the flesh. Jesus condemned all sin to the flesh. He ascribed sin to the flesh, just like the Jews ascribed sin to um, um, Azazel, you know, the, the thing that they, the ritual they used to practice as far as, you know, for sin, for redemption of sins and all this. Is, it's too much to go into, but Jesus ascribed sin to the flesh. Our flesh will die eventually, or it'll be changed at the rapture. That's the only exception to that. But our bodies can't enter. These bodies, these fleshly bodies, these flesh suits, they can't go to heaven because they're, they're too filthy. They're too evil. And um, whenever we do something, we make bad choices. This flesh is what pays the price for it. I mean, it's cause and effect. It's not punishment from God, per se. It's cause and effect. So in other words, you do something really dumb, and, and it comes back to bite you. It's it's on you. It's not on God. Because your spirit's redeemed. You're going to go to heaven, but you, you you stand to suffer greatly here because of it. And God does chastise his children. In other words, he, he disciplines them and, and teaches them. So there's also that, you know, God could um, put you through some serious trials to get you to wake up. And you don't, you don't want to have to go through that either. So just keep all that in mind. And let me keep moving on to 17 minutes in. And I haven't even really started yet. So um, I'm just going to try to sum up some things really quick. Um, but before I do that, there's one more new thing that I, I wanted to mention. Concerning my brother Kenny, when he passed away on my birthday, I don't know why, but I'm, actually I've been sitting on this for two weeks. I can't rem ever remember to put it in a video, and, and, and so I just I remember now, so I want to just put it in there. It's not a big deal, but it's just something I wanted to add. Um, it's, it's um when when he passed away on my birthday, you know, and um I was trying to figure out could that be if that was a timeline or if it was just a, a marker of a timeline. God already knew it was going to happen, but this was. For, you know, because it was on my birthday, maybe God was trying to show me something like a time mark or something. I couldn't figure it out. I said, well, already days have passed and already weeks have passed. The only thing left now is months and years. <clears throat> and I don't think um, it's going to be, I'm looking at sevens guys, because that's when I heard the show for us on seventh days. That's God's number. So I'm always looking at the sevens, you know, just like yesterday, I was very observant yesterday and yesterday morning, you know, because the seventh is when I heard the trumpet. So I'm always listening for the trumpets on the seventh days. But anyways, from, from, from Kenny passing on, on January 21st, now I don't know if the days work out to exactly seven months or not, but it's, but it's going to be seven months will be this month, August. So, you know, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, that's seven months, this month. Now, I don't know if that means anything or if that's got anything to do with anything. It's just something that I thought about, um, and I wanted to add that because, you know, if it was a part of a, if my, because my rapture vision happened, he was the only one in it, and it was, I was 11 years old. So could it be that when I see him go, that there is a given time frame, you know, a, a given time frame, not necessarily day or hour. It could be. I don't know. I, I don't think so. But it could have been a seven month thing. You know, I believe that the one year warning has already been given. That could have been the September and the November of trumpets could have been some kind of a of a one year warning of the of the of the um, mark of the beast coming or the, the sword coming. But that, um, but for the rapture, Kenny was involved in that with me in my vision. So maybe that was a seven year, a seven year time frame. In other words, it's just something else, guys. All I'm saying is there's something else pointing to this month. 
in my walk. And, and, and you know, and, and I know a lot of people have their own different walks. I'm not a prophet, guys. I'm not. Uh, I'm not under any kind of delusion that I'm. I am a prophet. I'm not a preacher. I'm not anybody special. I'm just a believer, just like you all, uh, born again, saved and sealed by the Holy Spirit. And 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 I and I hear God's voice, in however way He comes. I, I I know it. I just feel it in my heart when when He's showing me something. I feel it. Doesn't mean that every single time some little thing happens that it's from God necessarily. But I do feel when I feel really strongly about it, I have to I have to let you guys know because you know it, it could very well be, and I think it is. So, anyways, I think that that could could be something. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be the rapture this month, but maybe it just means that something substantial will happen this month, or it maybe maybe I'm just drawing it out of thin air. But seven months from all I'm saying, seven months from when he passed, puts us in this month. So. Um, I got to be looking at it. I got to be taking it serious because these uh, the sevens, you know, that's God's number and, and, and things keep happening with sevens involved in it. So it's important. I believe it's important. And I believe that all of us, everything that we all see, all the little signs that we're seeing, all the little things that we're, um, we're coming to understand is all important because there's a verse and I, and I wanted to get the verses and bring it guys, but um, I just, I, I wanted to get this thing made, you know, kind of quick. Because it is the eighth of August, and, and it's you know time ain't slowing down. So, uh, but 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 basically, there's a verse in the Bible where um, the it's talking about the the parts of the body, how the the toe is um, even though it's not one of the pronounced body parts or whatever, it's just as important as 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 the pronounced body parts. Sometimes more so because you know without your toes you can't walk. You know without your feet you can't walk, even though they're not the the most um, decorated or ornamented parts of your body. And, and I'm, I'm no, I'm, I'm butchering these verses all of it. I don't even remember what they were. I'm, I'm just kind of giving you an overview of what it's explaining. Basically that all the parts of the, of the body are important. Even the fingers, the fingernails, everything has a purpose and a part to play and is very important to the rest of the body. So we all have our little signs. We all have our little, um, you know, things that happen that God shows us. And none is any less important than the other. But it's an overall picture that we are building here, like a big tapestry. And we see the overall picture with everyone basically seeing the same kind of things. Some see it a little different. You know, some people are hearing trumpets that sound, you know, apocalyptic up in the sky that, that don't sound like the trumpets that I heard. Some people are hearing singing while other people are hearing bells ringing. Some people are hearing knocking while other people are hearing voices, um, whispers. I mean... All these things, guys, um, when you take an overall picture, now some of them could be people having some kind of demonic experience, God forbid, but I don't know. I'm not saying that, that everything that happens is you know necessarily God giving us a sign, but but I believe that he's showing everybody similar things. So, you know, we go back now to 2020 and we start thinking about all the things that happened. First, you had the pandemic. Then you had the um, the political stuff which actually had the political stuff first i mean that came out first so you had the political stuff first and then the political scandal or at least the um you know what people were calling a political scandal and then you had the the the, the pandemic then you had the racial tension and then you had you know and all the the rioting and you had all that then um in the midst of that you had ufo disclosure that most people i think just didn't even pay attention to because there was so many more important things going on at the time than the government saying that there's aliens out there somewhere or whatever. But you had that. You had the uh, meteors, uh, people talking about, astro astronomers talking about how the meteors are coming. These big, uh, we've in, the, uh, somehow entered into some kind of an asteroid field or whatever, and meteors are coming. And we've seen quite a few this year, last year. Um, then, you know, with the earthquakes, with the... Um, the pestilence being like, you know, for one thing, the pandemic and other things that have come out. I mean, there's even a monkey pox that's been spotted in the United States. Uh, there's all kinds of weird things coming uh, to the earth with, you know, just different kinds of pandemic plagues and pandemics. And, you know, the, with the, you know, remember last year we had all, we had murder hornets. We had um, birds falling out of the sky all over the place. I remember this one, article where these birds fell out of the sky onto a ship and um they, nobody knows why they suspect it was microwaves or something that was causing it from the boat who knows i don't know but um you know and then we've also in recent time we've had red seas uh where we're called the red tide where some kind of algae made the ocean look like it was turning to blood i mean 
It's like harbingers the end time. Then, of course, the locust. Oh, boy. The locust, the swarms of locusts that, that was devouring the Middle East and moved its way up into India. And now have even been spotted here, I think, in places, some of the locust swarms. You know, then you had the, whatever it was, what was it? The, oh, gosh, 17 years, cicadas. Anyways, the cicadas. And then the cicadas finally emerged. They got some kind of disease that's going to wipe them out. It's weird stuff. Just so many weird things happening. Record number of hurricanes, all kinds of weird signs in the heavens, you know, weird um, astrological things, you know, all these um, these numbered comets that actually tell a story. You got, um, and then you got uh, the watchmen and all who are digging deep into the word and they're finding out that maybe, maybe we shouldn't be looking at calendars, but we should be looking at God's stars, the sun and the moon, because he put those there for signs and seasons. So astrological things are prevalent. Um, and while people are watching those things, they're noticing other things that are actually out of order and out of whack. I mean, uh, there's some meteor, and I don't remember what it was, but uh, they're saying it had a, it was some kind of intelligent design thing because it was, was it going in a straight line? It was actually altering its, its trajectory. Weird stuff, guys. Weird stuff. Oh, and, and um, the, the, God, so many things have happened. It's just so hard to keep up with. That's what I said. If I wrote everything down and tried to make a video, it'd last for hours. Uh, the uh, monoliths, those um, those monoliths, the, whatever you call them, that just kept popping up, those cylinder-shaped things that kept popping up all over the country and the world, um, that they, they don't know for sure if people are putting them there or that they're just appearing there. Something odd about that. It's something it caught my attention right from the very start. Something very odd. Is all of it man-made? Some of these things, are they being made by something else, maybe? Some, some other being, like fallen angels, maybe? Demons? I don't know. Just, just weird stuff happening. Everywhere, everywhere. And um, all these convergences and all these things that have happened last year and this year seem to be um, setting the stage for, well, not only that, but political scandal, too, that continues, by the way, um, everywhere. And then, you know, it seems to be setting the stage of, you know, the, the beast system that's in Revelation and the mark of the beast that will soon come on the scene. And um, these things are um, ramping up every day. It's getting crazier and crazier out there. So um, just in review, just I just want you to consider all those things and then look at how we're being led by these things into this much worse thing. This the shadow of, of um, communism, the shadow of oppression the shadow of um, persecution, where they're going to be forcing people to take something that they're not morally um, in agreement with, you know, something that's against their religion. They're, they're, either, they're not being forced to, like, necessarily being held down and done, and done it to, but they're being persuaded by fear of not being able to leave their homes, not being able to buy food, not being able to get government support or sub subsidiaries, subsidiaries, I'm sorry, uh, or not being able to uh, to go to work. So this this fear is going to cause a lot of people who would not have ordinarily done this thing to do it anyways. And guys, if you think that God is happy about this, then you're not, then you, you know, you, he, he's not. He's not happy about this. Um, this is something that we uh, as Christians, a lot of us strongly feel, uh, we're, we're against it strongly. We, we feel strongly against it for many reasons. You know, scientific and religious reasons. We do not want to have anything to do with this, and we should have that right and not be ostracized from society where we can't work and support our families. That's, that's messed up. That just shows that the government is way too involved in our lives. Um, this is a sign of tyranny. This has happened many times. It happened in Nazi Germany. The same kind of stuff happened there, and it's happening again. And if people allow it to, and it almost seems like people just handing over their rights and freedom and their liberty in exchange for security, safety. The Bible says when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. I think it was Abraham Lincoln, and don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it was Abraham Lincoln that quoted, if you give up your liberties for safety or for security, then you'll have neither. You'll lose both of them because it's it's a trick, okay? It's like a, it's like a government, like a mafia shakedown. Okay, we're going to protect you, but you got to give us, you know, your rights and freedoms. See, once you've given, freely given away, so they can't take them. First of all, most of them are God-given. They can't take them because the Constitution. So what they do is they get you to give them up. That way they can just erase that line off the Constitution. Oh, we don't have need to have that there anyways because they willingly gave that up. You know, there's no point even going any further with it. It's all, it's all good. They're not going to fight against it. They're the ones that gave it to us. You know, they want to be feel safe. 
So instead of going to God and being under the shelter of the Almighty, like in Psalms 91, being protected by him and that hedge of protection from his grace and his love, they have sought refuge in a corrupt and evil government and society who wants nothing less than for them to suffer and perish for that matter. Give up everything. The government just wants more power. They want everything. I mean, they can't just stop at being rich and have, you know, having everything they want. They got to take it all. They got to take away our rights and our freedoms, guys. And this is, um, I'm not talking anarchy. What I'm talking is that this is the devil. I'm not blaming the people. Guys, I'm praying for the people. This is something that was predicted in Revelation that's coming. This is not an anarchy. Look, I, I believe in God. I'm not, I'm not an anarchist. I'm not, I, 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 I condone violence. I'm not doing anything to provoke, provoke violence. That's not what it's going to take. It's going to take repentance. It's going to take turning to God. God can fix this. Um, but, but, but it's going to take a revival like no one has ever seen. Because right now we are so far into this thing that I just don't see how there's a whole lot that can be done at this point. I mean, it's just, it's, it's sickening, the things. And you can start looking into Hollywood and seeing the kind of things that these rich elite people do behind the scenes that's absolutely repulsive. I mean, you've got child pornography, you've got human um, trafficking, you've got drugs and more drugs, and you've got all these sinister scientific experiments and projects going on behind the scenes. I mean, it's a cesspool, guys. I mean, we're living in a cesspool, not just the United States. I'm talking about the whole world here. The whole world has gone dark, and it's about to go much more dark when the tribulation comes. So guys, um, be encouraged that we are in the very last moments. Now is not the time to shrink back in fear. Now is the time to stand up and proclaim the glory of God that now no longer is it even in our hands because no matter what we do at this point, it's not going to stop this train that's coming. Only God can stop it now. So now is a good time to say, Lord, I give it all to you. This is your fight. This is no longer our fight, guys. We can't fight this monster. This, this beast is, is worldwide. It's, it's, there's billions of people involved in it. We can't fight that. Only God can fight a battle like that. So it's time to just throw your hands up and say, Lord, I turn it over to you. Jesus, take the wheel, you know, because I'm, I've, I'm, I'm helpless here. I need you. I can't do this without you. And, and incidentally, if you haven't accepted Lord Jesus Christ, same thing applies, guys. Turn it over to him. We can't, we can't do anything for, for our afterlife. We can't affect anything in the afterlife except by accepting Christ and, and, and getting redeemed, redemption through his blood. We cannot do anything. This is all about God. Only God can do it. But you got to make a choice. It's about choices. And the choice you got to make here is where do you want to be when this world catches on fire person? so to speak, you know, when the, when the spiritual lights go out and it gets dark and everything begins to burn, who are you going to put your faith in? Are you going to put it into a corrupt, evil world and the world system or government full of crooked politicians and child molesting evil whoremongers? Is that who you're going to put your faith and trust in? Or are you going to put your faith in Almighty God, the God of love, mercy, kindness, all attributes that are good? The, the God who has the power not only has the power, but has the will because he loves you to save you through his son, Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him now today, guys. Don't wait another minute because every minute that you wait, it's like putting that gun to your head and spinning the, and spinning the, the wheel, you know, because that, that's, that's what it amounts to. Because if without Christ, there is no afterlife. There's only judgment and death. Please, guys, I urge you, if you're listening to the sound of my voice and you haven't come to Jesus Christ, Come to him today because not only will you be promised protection, promised an escape. He promises to return for us, promised to give us eternal life through his blood. But he also, there's a hedge of protection that is given to a saved Christian where God is protecting you. Even his angels protect you guys. You're, you're, you're going to feel the joy of true, the true joy that you can't feel from earthly and worldly things. I don't care how much money you got or how many how, how many friends you have or how much status quo you have with the, with the world. doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. Joy and happiness comes from the Lord. True joy, the true happiness. There's this false sense of joy, but guys, it's very short-lived and very shallow. But the joy that comes from God is the hope 
of everlasting life and the hope of being with your family again, spending eternity with those that you love and being with God and, and, and having everything your heart ever desires. That's, that's the hope. Um, and, and, and we know he's coming back, guys. We know we know he's coming back. We can feel that this world is on a, a, tra a track that's got a broken, that's broken and, and the car is going to fly off any minute. We're, we're like, it's like being, it's like being on a roller coaster in the dark and we know there's a broken track somewhere and we're flying through the dark and we're about to hit that track. And when we do, we know it's all over. It's coming. It's coming like a, like a freight train hitting downhill without brakes. It's coming right at us. There's only one escape and that's through Jesus Christ and faith in God. Do it today, guys, while there's still time. Time's running out. Um, I, you know, I love y'all and I don't want to see anything happen to anyone, but, um, don't wait until it, it happens to say, you know, I'm, I'm not here to say, well, after it happens, I'm going to say I told you so, because then it'll be too late. You know, there, there's no telling you I told you so. If you don't heed the voice of the people who are telling you right now that time has run out, if you don't listen to that voice, now, if we're wrong, <laughs> you get, you get to get to live. I mean, so it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, no one's hurt by being warned and doing the right thing. But now, on the other hand, if you don't heed the warning and you don't do something about it, and that train comes. Well, all I can say is you're train kill. I mean, you're, you're gone. There's, there's nothing anyone can do for you after that. Um, they'll just be scraping up the pieces of, for the next couple of miles down the track. I know since I'm just being, I know it's kind of gruesome, guys, but I'm just trying to make a strong point here that when that train comes, it's too late. You know, you've got to get off the tracks. Clear the tracks now. Accept Lord Jesus Christ and, and do it today. Don't waste another minute. Drop on your knees right now if you can. If you're somewhere where you can just get down on your knees and pray to God and say, Lord, I accept your free gift. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe Jesus is not only the son of God, but he lived a perfect life and died on the cross in my place because that's where we should be because of our sin. We were born into it from the Garden of Eden. So he, he, he died on that cross for our sins and he made atonement with his own precious blood, the blood of a perfect man born through the Holy Spirit who walked a perfect sinless life who is the perfect example and sacrifice to pay those sins back. Put your trust in him. Just say, Lord, I put your, my trust in you. I accept the free gift and, I, and you are the Lord. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. You have eternal life. From that moment on, you have eternal life. Your spirit will live on. Your body's going to die or it may be changed when the rapture comes because when the rapture comes, we're not going to face, we won't even see death because our bodies will be changed so quickly and we'll be given new glorified bodies. This body may just disintegrate and fall to ashes on the ground like some movies predict. Or maybe it just vanishes. Or maybe it falls as if it had died. I don't know how that works. But as far as you're concerned, you're not going to know death. You're going to be instantly transformed into eternity. Into an immortal, permanent, glorified body. And it says that in heaven we will see Jesus as he is because we will be like him. And remember, guys, when I was talking about the, the writing on the wall, well, it was for that person that could understand the writing on the wall that would be clothed in purple and given a chain of gold, who would rule a third of the kingdom. That person was Daniel, and that person is a shadow type of the Christian church, who will be given a third of the kingdom. How do we get the third of the kingdom? Because we will be heirs to God's throne with Christ, and Christ is a one in three God is a one in three God. He's, a, he's, he's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will be the body of Christ and we will make up that one third of God's kingdom. Do you get what I'm, you get what I'm saying? We are the Daniel of the book of Daniel. We, we can read the writing on the wall. And if we don't heed that writing, our kingdom will be divided and we will perish. But if we read that writing and we adhere to it and we accept and put our trust in, in the Lord Jesus, we will be given that 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 purple robe and that chain of gold and we will be called up and taken out of here and we will be get, may become heirs with Christ and will inherit a third of the kingdom of God because of faith not because of what we did we don't deserve that nobody deserves that but we will get it because Jesus paid the price so that we could he loved us enough to bring us into the fold through faith so Believe, have faith. That's what required. God is not pleased. It said the only thing um, that the, the, the only thing that um, pleases God is faith. There's no other way to please God except through faith. But so you know that when you have faith in Christ, you've pleased God. But you've also 
That is the requirement. That is our requirement. You know, it's not about the Ten Commandments anymore for the world at large. At the great in the age of grace, it's about faith in Christ. Sure, the, the, the law is important. Everything's important. Anything that God does is important. But that's not what's going to get you to heaven. Even if you obey the, the commandments perfectly, you still would miss out because you didn't accept Jesus. We're already condemned without him. Our bodies are already going, they're already condemned. And not only that, he condemned sin to the flesh as well. So what sin we were already in, everything else was tacked on top of it. This body is doomed, but your spirit can live on through Christ. And I suggest you do it quickly because time is running out. I love y'all so much. I don't want to see anyone perish. I don't want to see anyone have to stand in judgment of God. That's the most terrible and horrific thing I can imagine. I'm more afraid of standing in judgment than I am the tribulation days because I am definitely more afraid of God than I am the devil, okay? Um, the devil can destroy our bodies. Like the Bible said, fear not him who can destroy the body only, but fear God who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Fear God. Trust in him. Put your faith in him. Believe what he says because he will do what he says. And he said he was sending his son and he will. And he said that, that we, there will be an escape, that, 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 those, that, that, that there will be those who will, will um, not, not taste of death. Well, that will happen. And those who um, will escape all the things coming to the earth in the, in the time of testing for the world, it will happen because God said it. I love y'all. And I'll see you on the next video. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the weekend.